We are delighted to welcome Tirumuhu Dimple Yadav, Member of Parliament has demonstrated that women's parliamentation in politics lead to the empowerment of society to deliver special address. Thalapati, M.K. Stalinji, Mrs. Kani Mohi, MP and Deputy General Secretary of DMK. General Secretary of International Congress, Priyanka Gandhi ji, MP and Working President of NCB, Mrs. Supriya Sule ji, former Chief Minister of Jammu Kashmir, Chairperson PDP, Mrs. Mehbooba Mufti ji, former MP and Pilot Bureau Member of CPIM, Mrs. Vashni Ali ji, National Congress, National Executive Committee Member, CPI, Mrs. Ani Rajaji, Minister of Food and Consumer Protection, Government of Bihar, Mrs. Leshi Singh Ji, Deputy Speaker, Delhi Assembly, and National Executive Member of AAP, Mrs. Raki Bidlin Ji, former MP and uh, National Spokesperson, AITC, Mrs. Shushmita Dev Ji, and all the dignitaries who are present, in front of me, all the distinguished guests and my fellow citizens of India. This day and moment have been 100 years in the making as today we celebrate the, cent the centenary of the DMK Patriarch and a great son of soil, a towering leader, a progressive ideologue, a politician par excellence and the founder of the politic, political movement for the betterment of India and all its people, respected Sri M. Karunanidhi ji. He was popular as Kalanyar and Muttamind Aranyar. Kalanyar was the title, Kalanyar was the title of Tamil politics. His life was marked by a relentless struggle for social justice and the empowerment of the marginalized communities, minorities, OBCs, SESTs, and especially women. His political journey was an unending quest to eradicate social inequalities. He championed the cause for women's rights, advocating for gender equality in a deeply patriarchal society. He advocated affirmative actions to support oppressed, marginalized communities and minorities. He was a great advocate of increased state autonomy and accountability in the Indian federal structure. He pursued the Rajamanar Committee's report that was accepted by the then Prime Minister, Mrs. Indira Gandhi ji, and the Chief Ministers got the right to hoist the flags on Independence Day. Kalina's life was dedicated to the pursuit of social justice, an endeavor that remains even more relevant and inspiring today. His vision was rooted in the principles of equality, fairness, and inclusivity. He believed that society could only prosper when every citizen, regardless of their background, was given equal opportunities to thrive. Under his leadership, the DMK pioneered several progressive policies that aimed to uplift the marginalized and oppressed sections of society. His government increased the reservation for backward classes from 25 to 31 percent and from 16 to 18 percent for SESTs, established the first ministry for the welfare of the backward class. As a member of parliament and a woman, I am deeply honored to address you all on this special occasion and I want to focus on the three fundamental aspects of the vision for India. An unyielding commitment to social justice, tireless effort to protect the dignity of each individual and untiring advocacy for women's rights. Samajwadi Party remains committed to these ideals as we cherish and uphold an unwavering commitment 
to protecting the respect and dignity of every individual. In a diverse India, the protection of regional, social, cultural and linguistic identities is of paramount importance as it is the integral to the identity and pride of each and every individual. Leadership in this regard is not about exclusion, but rather about pluralism and diversity. Celebrating the unique cultural tapestry that is India. Now I turn my attention to the third crucial aspect of our vision, a deep sense of commitment to women's rights. We all must be a true feminist today, advocating for gender equality, women's education and upliftment, policies that have always been advocated and implemented by the Samajwadi Party in Uttar Pradesh, found home and expression in Tamil Nadu under Kalinnar. He raised girls' marriageable age, provided women vantha reservations in the government jobs, local body elections, property rights, subsidized loans, financial assistance to widows, marriage, intercaste marriages, self-help groups, vocational training programs, free power and gas connections, and rice at rupees one, and many much policies. We must recognize that women's economic empowerment is not only a matter of individual dignity, but also a path towards overall societal and economic progress. This is in strict conformance to what successive Samajwadi Party governments have delivered for women in Uttar Pradesh under the Chief Ministership of Honorable Netaji and Sri Akhesh Yadavji. For us, women's rights is not a manner of speech, but a matter of faith and action. Let me draw draw the focus to the task at hand for this August gathering. The Magalir Urmai Manadu being organized today by the DMK Women's Wing headed by MP Kani Mohi calls upon the central government headed by BJP for immediate action on women's rights issues. The BJP government has totally been proven incompetent and an abject failure in securing women's rights and providing security and safety to women. India, had India has witnessed an alarming surge in crimes against women, particularly of the OBCs, SCSTs and the minorities. This dire situation reflects poorly on the government's ability to ensure the safety and the security of women especially from the OBCs, SESTs and minorities who bear the brunt of this crisis. Manipur is a living example today for us. What has been seen in Manipur is really shattering the very idea of India. The data reveals that incidents of rape and sexual assault and violence against young girls, infants, women and older women have reached to one of the highest ever under the BJP government, exposing a fundamental breakdown in social order, sense of security and law and order. The lack of swift justice and a consistent track record of not holding perpetrators accountable has led to this scary situation in the country. This needs to be corrected immediately. Nothing can be allowed to impinge on the right of life. In the Indian democracy, women constitute of half the population. And this active participation in politics is essential for the robust democracy and a truly inclusive society. The recent proposal by the BJP government to postpone the vital reform of implementing 33% reservations of women in parliament and state assemblies way into the distant future is a huge disappointment that appears to be only a BJP political ploy. The BJP's move is only an eyewash purely for electoral gains. Samajwadi Party's argument for providing separate reservations for OBCs, 
for SCSCs and minorities is a critical progressive stance that deserves immediate inclusion and, subs and consequent implementation. The BJP government's one-size-fits-all will certainly dilute the representation of marginalized communities. The Samajwadi Party's proposition recognizes the unique challenges faced by the women of OBCs, SESTs and minorities by providing separate reservation. It ensures that these historically disadvantaged groups have a more equitable chance at political participation. BJP government should be open to this critical improvement offered by the Samajwadi Party. It is essential to recognize that diversity in representation is key to vibrant and dynamic democracy. The Samajwadi Party's argument rightly underscores this crucial point. As Samajwadi Party has cut Samajwadi Party has consistently advocated for women's safety and their rights. We recognize the importance of safe environment for women as a catalyst for the societal change and economic growth. A safe, empower, a safe environment empowers women to participate more actively in the workforce, driving India's progress. In fact, Claudia Golden of Harvard, who won the award Nobel Prize in Economics argues for increased women labor force participation rate validating Samajwadi Party's approach and philosophy on this subject. The time for procrastination has passed. We need to break down the barriers that have held women back for so long. Let us build a society where everyone can live with dignity, freedom and equal opportunities. We at Samajwadi Party, along with the India Coalition, are committed to making this vision a reality. And we urge all the citizens to join us in this essential demand for the coming change. It is an idea whose time has come. Thank you, DMK, for organizing this wonderful Congress, this wonderful conference today, and for giving me this opportunity to present my views, my thoughts, on behalf of Samajwadi Party. And I thank all the uh, women wing of DMK. Thank you. Jai Hind. Thank you, ma'am. Samatavatayam Samuha Matratim Ilakaha Kunda Makale Ruri Mikalikaka Poradi Varum, India Communist Kachin Desi and Irvaha Kuru Rupinarum, India Mada Desi Samaratan Podushay 